for joining me for another Pixie Talks review vlog. Pixie Talks, Pixie Talks, reviews and vlogs at Pixie Talks. Pixie Talks, Pixie Talks, reviews and vlogs at Pixie Talks. Woo! This week I want to talk about an absolutely beautiful animated stop motion feature, which for some reason I really haven't heard too many people talking about. Even though it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of artistry and a lovely fairy tale. Let's talk about Kubo and the Two Strings. So Kubo and the Two Strings is heavily based in Japanese mythology and is a riveting tale of adventure, loss, and coming of age. It is also a breathtaking piece of stop motion, an art style and medium that is becoming less and less widely produced as time goes on. Stop motion is fascinating and beautiful, and this film is absolutely no exception. The movie concerns the adventures of Kubo, a young boy whose mother is very sick. She tells him stories of the magical exploits of her family and warns him against her sisters, who would stop at nothing to capture him and steal his eye. When the two sisters attack, he finds himself on the run, with only a talking monkey and an enchanted beetle man to help him on his quest. It's a standard fairy tale in a lot of ways. He's joined by magical creatures on his quest to find and assemble the magical suit of armor so that he can defeat the evil Moon King. But despite being fairly predictable, it does manage to be an engaging ride the entire way through, with enchanting characters and heart-pulling themes of love, loss, and acceptance. Now, as far as writing and the use of narrative themes goes, it does struggle a little bit with not quite knowing what it wants to be. Is it about coming of age? Is it about dealing with loss? Is it about stories and taking personal agency of your life's narrative? Is it about memories and nostalgia? It's about all of these things, which can end up feeling a little bit overcrowded and convoluted. That said, it does manage to pull all those themes together well enough to be a very engaging narrative. And you absolutely cannot deny the beauty of the artistry. The stop motion is smooth and enchanting, and the models are such an interesting style of stylization. Everything comes alive right off the screen and will pull you into its world. It's clear there was a lot of love poured into those models and sets, and it shows. Kubo and his companions come to life as surely as Kubo's set of origami papers. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the one big disappointment with this film, which is representation. Unfortunately, the cast particularly the main cast, are all white in a movie set in Japan and based heavily on Japanese mythology. And this has garnered some concern and some criticism. The director has addressed this and gone on record saying that they chose the actors based on who they thought was best suited for the roles and that race did not factor into their decision. And especially pointed out that in an animated film such as this, you can't actually see the actors, so their race doesn't have any bearing on the race of the character. Look, the problem is that you are white people who are appropriating and telling stories within a different culture and then not actually hiring people of that culture for the feature. I don't think the director intended any harm, but unfortunately this is just not okay. Now they argue that they had people who were not British playing British characters in another one of their films and that nobody made a squawk about that, but see, here's the thing. White people are not starved for representation. We are in everything. It's just plain absurd to argue that that is the exact same thing. Now that said, regardless of the unfortunate casting choices, this movie does need to be supported. Because despite the voice acting cast, this is a movie about Japanese characters. And I have legit had people tell me that they weren't going to bother taking their kids to it because they didn't think their kids would be able to relate to Asian characters or an Asian setting. Which just makes me... <sighs> if we want to see more diversity in media, we have got to support it when it's there. Even if it's not perfect. Not to mention that stop motion as an artistic medium is dying off and that just makes me very sad. So please do support this movie if you can. It was a lovely film, an enchanting fairy tale, and a beautiful ride. I highly recommend it. And 
that's it for my review of Kubo and the Two Strings. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do be sure to subscribe for more. You can also add me on Facebook and Twitter. And with that, I will see you next week for some more Doctor Who. Bye!